I need a drink. Oh, it's my eye. Oh, it's lemon water. Oh, God. A lady. Yes, I think, now that I've looked at it, I think that the face on the Sphinx is 100% a girl. Hi guys, I'm Johanna. Welcome to my channel. Come in, sit down, stay. Please, please stay and please um, join in the fun. <laughs> I've been researching a bunch of videos that I wanna do for you guys. But today I wanted to talk about the Sphinx. I don't know what that is. Okay, I'm just assuming that you guys are up to date with the whole theory that the Sphinx is not like 3,000 years old and that it is more like 10,000 years old according to the work of John Anthony West and Robert Schock and all of the geologists that help to compile all of that information. Great, so we're all on board with the idea or the premise or the theory that the Sphinx is in fact actually a lot older. And I do believe that is so. The more I look into it and the more that I stand back and look at um, the whole ancient civilization theory as, as a whole, it, it makes so much sense. And here's the why. Oh, also I got a new book. I got a book that was quite, that was quite good. So I thought I'd just shout out this book. It's called The Land of Osiris and it's by Stephen Mayer. Mailer. Stephen Mailer. Why I quite agree with this guy is because he was taught by Yusef's dad and I was taught by Yusef. I went to Egypt last year on a chemetology tour, um, the School of Kemet and it was run by Yusef, who, and the school was started in honor of Yusef's father, who was one of the very last secret wisdom keepers in Egypt. So in Egypt, you have two timelines. You have the official Egyptologist British timeline, which was kind of established by the French and the British archeologists from the kind of Victorian time onwards. They came into Egypt, dug up a load of stuff and were like, ah, this is dated from here and this is dated from here and that is exactly how it's always been. And then you actually have the native people from the area who have their own oral traditions and their own kind of secrets and wisdom keeping little things and they pass it on, obviously, orally, and they have a very different timeline and a very different story to what the British archaeology timeline is. So I'm just looking into both right now and just seeing where I fit. And at the minute, I'm sliding definitely over with Yusef and his dad. And I feel like the natives and the original oral traditions are probably a lot closer to the truth of it. Let's just roll down the Sphinx, what we know. So um, the Sphinx, which is on the Giza Plateau, it's kind of on a causeway that it's going from the middle pyramid down um, to what geologists are saying used to be like a, a river, like the Nile used to be able to come up to the front paw, where the front paws of the Sphinx were. And that's where people would come and kind of get off. <laughs> so it was in the 90s, I believe, that uh, Robert Schock and John Anthony West and all those legends went to the Sphinx and they started looking at the rock and they started particularly looking at the geology of the rocks. And they started going, oh, hey, this is weird. This looks like, this looks, this looks like really old uh, weathering, but not weathering that could come from anything else other than rain. Like nothing else can make these specific markings that we know of in scientific geology. And they went and they got this assessed by like, I'm a, I think it was hundreds of professional geologists. And they showed them a photo of the Sphinx without showing them that it was the Sphinx. And they said, what is this to you? And they were like, that's thousands of years of precipitation weathering a hundred percent and then when they showed them like the zoomed out and they showed them that it was actually the sphinx um everybody got really nervous to say that because they were like oh no that goes against uh, the timeline that we have of human history so no i'm maybe i was wrong like no 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 i retract i retract Hmm. So they went on this campaign to try and change the timeline and say that maybe the Sphinx is in fact older than it was. It is so obvious when you see the Sphinx in person that the head has been recarved. It, it's, it's tiny, it is this tiny little head on this huge body of a cat or a lion or some sort of feminine feline. Some people think that it's it's a dog. Like I have a dog. It's it, the paws and the tail. In it, it's a cat. It doesn't look like a dog. The tail is way too long for a dog, and the paws are like feline paws. They're not like 
dog paws. I personally believe that it is a lion. The thing that really kind of got me to go, okay, I think it's, I think it's definitely a lot older than we think it is, um, was because the fact they looked at the stars, you can go and put into a, oh, I'm so excited. You can, there is a computer system somewhere, there's like software that you can put a specific date in time and it will show you the, the stars from a particular location and a date and time in the world. So you can say Giza Plateau, 10,500 BC, and it will show you what the stars are around that particular time. And the Sphinx lines up exactly with the constellation of Leo uh, in the like the summer equinox. It, it, it just matches, which is really weird. If you were gonna make a Sphinx like 7,000 years after that, uh, why would you match it to a star constellation from 7,000 years previous? It just, hmm, just didn't sit right with me, did it? Okay, so let's talk about, let's talk about the head. Let's talk about the head of the Sphinx and the face of the Sphinx. Let's talk about our head. So when, when I went, you can just, you can just tell that the Sphinx's head is not the original head. It's not in proportion. And when you look at absolutely everything else in Egypt, all the other amazing megalithic structures, the dimensions and the proportions are perfect. Like it's freakily mathematically perfect in ancient Egypt and pre-dynastic Egypt. And the fact that they did the Sphinx and they got the head so proportionally wrong, it's just not like, it's just not acceptable, Susan. It doesn't fly. I feel that it's so obvious that, that this thing has been recarved possibly multiple times. Let's, let's see how far back I'm open to the idea of the Sphinx being super, 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 super old. I have a feeling that one of the heads in the timeline of the Sphinx has been a lion. Um, Annie XT, who's a, a fellow YouTuber, he did a great like hour long documentary all about like the hidden, um, the hidden doors that are all over the Sphinx. And there, uh, there's literally like five doors all over the Sphinx, according to his video, which I didn't even, I didn't even know that there was that many kind of doorways and holes and passageways into the Sphinx. Didn't know that, thanks man. In his documentary, they do, they get a professional sculptor to do a, a lion's head, like a female lioness's head, and they say, is it possible to sculpt it down to the current pharaoh's head that we have now? And he showed you exactly how they could do it with like extra rock. It, it's it perfectly, like it's possible. We're looking for if it is it possible. Then is it probable? And then you can then you can make a decision. Maybe we should go back to the beginning. And this is why I should always write notes, Johanna, but I don't. I just chat about it because. Well. Yusuf's dad said that the native oral tradition about the Sphinx is that the Sphinx is about 50,000 years old. It goes right back. And at that point, it wasn't a, um, a carved statue. It was just a natural um, rock formation that kind of did that shape, which was considered at the time for people to be quite a sacred spot because it had a particular energy. The whole Giza Plateau is on a, gr a specific grid line of energy. So people would come to through the jungle and the forest that that would have been at the time and they would have come to this specific rock and they would have uh, renewed themselves in the energy of the rock. So it was, it was a very sacred space for them. Then they began by carving out the front of the rock. Science can back up this part of the tradition. Uh, the Sphinx is way more weathered on the front than it is at the back. And they can't work out why that is, because if it's been under the sand for the same amount of time, why has it got different levels of weathering, like from the front to the back? It fits the theory exactly that it was carved in sections. So the first, the front bit was carved first, thousands and thousands of years ago, and then the middle bit was carved, and then the butt. And originally uh, the carving was probably, well, it was around the time of the 10,500 BC, um, they probably would, that's when the lion head would have been on there to match the paws, which would have made total sense if it was aligning to the stars and all of that, yada yada. Hello, it's future Johanna here. As I continued researching, I found a 32,000 year old statue from the ice age half human half lion figurine maybe it's a deity if the equinox which is on a twenty six thousand year rotational cycle that means that either the lion head on the sphinx was aligned with the stars at ten thousand five hundred bc or equally at thirty six thousand five hundred bc which is around the same time 
that they found this lion, half lion, half human deity sculpture. So maybe, maybe that was right. Maybe 50,000 years ago, it was a rock. And then 36,000 years ago, they did a lion aligning it to the stars. I don't know. There's two, there's two possible timelines for this. Anyway, back to where we were. So in pre-dynastic Egypt, or like very, very first, very early, early Egypt, they created, they recarved the head of the Sphinx, which was a lion, and they put it into a the mother of the pharaoh, a lady. Yes, I think, now that I've looked at it, I think that the face on the Sphinx is 100% a girl. And not only a girl, I think she's also a black woman. Now I can't not see it. Once I saw it, I can't not see it. Um, okay, here's the why. Ooh, message? Okay, never mind. I keep calling her the Sphinx because that's like what we know her as, but the original name for her was Tefnut. Sounds like a Swedish chocolate, I don't know. <laughs> it means the spittle of Newt, which like literally the spit. I think the tr oral tradition was that there was gods that in the sky and they like spat down and it made like a holy place. Like the energy was from the stars, something like that. When you look at the like physical profiling of the face, it actually doesn't look like a masculine face. And I've looked at some of the other statues of the male Egyptian pharaohs and this one is different, it is it is different. And obviously the nose is missing, which is like the crucial factor. But if you superimposed a female African nose on there and then took the side profile of it, when I did a side by side of some lovely African ladies that I found on the internet, I think that the side profile matches. The, the Sphinx actually slants from the top of the forehead and it gets fuller around the base of the chin. And obviously the nose is missing, so it's really exaggerated, but imagine that there is like a nose there. So you've got like a more of a sloped forehead, the nose, a, a sort of slim nose, and then you've got a fuller down here. And then I looked at the Sphinx against some of the, the Egyptian pharaoh, the mummies, the actual heads of the dudes that were there. Uh, in the museum and I looked at the profiles of like men are uh, from North Africa and they tend to have the opposite side profile they tend to have a, a more of a forward forehead the nose comes out like this and then the chin goes in at the it's like the complete opposite shape the chins go in it has a different shape and it's now when I look at it I think okay is it possible is it probable? And so one, is it possible that this could have been at first carved into a female black featured lady? Yes, of course it's possible because the first early dynasties of Egypt or the pre-dynastic Egyptians would have been dark, like Nubians. The latest information is saying that the early um, dynastic Egyptians were African in features. In fact, that would align more with the, the new information that we're kind of going with now. Is it probable? Again, yes, because pre-dynastic Egypt and even ancient Egyptians, they worshipped the feminine deities and the goddesses and the mothers of the pharaohs were held in way more esteem than we ever give credit for um, because it was a matriarchy before it was a patriarchy, like in the timeline of human events. And so it makes a lot of sense that they would have carved a statue to a woman at the time. And then I think later when they did restorations to the Sphinx, which is when you look at the very front of the Sphinx in the stela, um, which was added later by the Egyptians, and they're talking about, they talk about doing restorations to the Sphinx around the same, in the Middle Kingdom, around the same time that it was supposed to have been carved entirely from scratch. Which again, it just doesn't make sense. Why would you say that you are restoring something and doing restorations on something that was built like literally not that long ago? And Egyptians built stuff to last. They aren't doing restorations like in the same time period, not major ones. So I think this is what happened. I think that the Middle Kingdom Egyptians, they didn't want to have this feminine deity 
this female face and I think that they wanted to change it to a male face so they added on the beard and there is evidence that the that the beard bit which is broken off and is now shoved in the Cairo museum that the beard bit was added on later and that's why it's like four and so they they gave her a beard they literally the bearded lady which is now the pharaoh um and it's entirely possible that the nose was taken off at another point to to again hide the features i don't know we, the nose has like according to reports the nose has like always been off like the nose was already off by the time napoleon found it it's possible that the nose was taken off to try and hide the original features or ethnicity of the sphinx it's possible is it probable not too sure about that one hmm there is the whole mythology about the sphinx being um having chambers inside maybe the hall of records underneath um that there are tunnels that go from the sphinx up to the pyramid and down to other parts of giza personally the more that i think about giza and um, we know probably five percent of the tunnel systems in giza i mean that's just the public that the egyptian government probably know maybe 12 percent this is, this is this is not accurate math but we know like a tiny 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 amount about the tunnel systems in giza but what i do know is that they had the capability to go so far down I think the deepest tunnel so far recorded is 300 meters. They could dig 300 meters through the bedrock with tools that we are not aware of because I don't think that was with a hand chisel, otherwise that would have taken thousands of years. And also, how do you even do that? How do you dig 300 meters into the bedrock? And how do you still keep breathing? The air gets impossibly hard to circulate down there. I mean, that's just, that's a whole other video. Is it possible that the Sphinx has chambers or um, corridors, tunnels to other places in Giza? Absolutely. Is it probable? I think it is highly probable. If you had this sacred site, uh, you're, you're gonna link it to other sacred sites, especially if water had anything to do with it. Because remember, at the time when all of this stuff was carved, there would be water coming right up to the Sphinx. So it makes sense that there would be water tunnelings maybe from the Sphinx to the, so you're gonna say power plant, well, the pyramid power plant, and all the way out to Giza. Apparently like the whole, from Saqqara to Giza, to like right down, like Abu Sir, apparently they are all interlocked on a grid of underground tunnels, which Yusuf's dad said he walked through the tunnel when he was a child. So this would have been like, I'm not sure how old Yusuf's dad was, but like this would, this was old times. He walked from Saqqara, he walked like the eight miles or whatever it is, or is it 20 miles? Oh, I'll have to find that out. He walked all the way from Saqqara to the Sphinx. He said he did it when he was a kid. He has a memory of doing that when he was a kid. So I think it is highly possible. I think it is highly probable. And just to recap, I think that the Sphinx, as in the sacred mound, I think it was recognized up to like 50,000 years. Well, they're saying 54,000 years ago. This was a sacred mound. People would come and renew and there was a lot of energy there. And then I think at some point between 50,000 years and 10,500 BC, they started to carve the Sphinx out and they started to make her an animal. I think is probably going to be the one aligning with the stars. That's for me the one that works the most. And then I think that the early or pre-dynastic Egyptians turned the lion into the female mother goddess um, or the mother of the pharaoh, like so. And then I think later on when they did repair works, um, they changed it to be a fair, a male pharaoh with a beard and everything. There, I mean, I could have said all of that in just three seconds, but I've made you watch this whole thing if you're still here. Thank you so much. I've got so many more videos coming up. Um, I also have like a lot of writing for those of you that don't know. I, um, I make comedy sketches elsewhere on the internet and I also write TV shows and movies. And one of the reasons why I went to Egypt was because I am writing a, a screenplay, a movie script about the, um, the fall of Atlantis and about the survivors of Atlantis who make it to the colony in Egypt to kind of restart everything there. And I had the inspiration to write the movie. So that's why I went to Egypt really. Um, 
was to, to get all the research for this movie and I came back with that plus so much more. Um, and now I'm just obsessed with uh, ancient history. Any thoughts, comments or concerns about uh, today's video, please just throw them in the comments because I try and jump in, I try to reply to uh, because I wanna learn, I'm learning. I'm not um, saying that I am at all an expert in this. I'm gonna leave the experts to do their experting. And I just wanna talk about it and research it. So um, right now where I'm thinking, I thought the Sphinx was maybe 10,000 years old. Now I'm thinking it's probably a lot older. And for any of you, just quickly, for any of you who are thinking it's it's not possible to the Sphinx to be any older than 10,000 years old, because it, how can it be 50,000 years old? Like that's not, that's not even possible. Literally the timeline of human history very recently, they found a bone, a bit of a bone from a homo sapien that they could accurately date to over 300,000 years old before it was 200,000. So we had homo sapiens, you know, coming into existence around 200,000 years ago. And then they just jumped in one archeological find, they jumped that to 300,000 years. So I'm thinking if, if human beings physically as we are now have been wandering around this earth, not really doing anything for 300,000 years. It makes perfect sense that by 50,000 years ago, they were starting to get these sacred mounds and they were starting to understand that sacred mounds aligned with stars and energy points and it was all coming together. I think we need to give people in the past so much more credit. And once you kind of release your brain from thinking that we, that we went in this linear timeline of like monkey ape now, what if it went kind of like this then once you get your head around that we're not going in a straight line and that it might be much more of a complicated and amazing journey um then things become possible is it possible is it probable for me yes but let me know if you kind of agree with me too or if you have completely opposing views just let me know i want to know why educate me and let's talk about it okay great thank you so much uh, for watching if you're still with me. I really, really appreciate it if you uh, like or subscribe. Um, it really helps the YouTube algorithm just sort of share me to a few more places. And um, it just really helps because I spend a lot of time researching and making videos of, on here, but at the minute YouTube doesn't, it doesn't pay um, the rent. And so I'm, I'm still trying to spread myself over lots of different places to make money. So one way that you can help me for free is literally just by commenting, liking, sharing, and subscribing. That is brilliant. I love you all. Thank you so much. Oh, I need a drink. Oh, it's my eye. Oh, it's lemon water. Oh God.